Hi, everybody. Now we're going to talk briefly about data analysis using the non-parametric tests for group comparisons. Remember the discussion we had about parametric and when to use those. And um, when you can't use parametric, then you'll use non-parametric. So remember that parametric requires the assumptions of normality and homogeneity of variance are met, and that we have independent observations. Non-parametric can be used when population distributions are not normal. So the graphic here depicts the normal distribution and, um, and the homogeneity of variance because you have the normal distribution you can use the parametric tests, but when you have non-normal distribution, which happens a lot in um, clinical studies, um, then you can use the uh, non-parametric tests. So here's a chart that just compares which parametric tests correlate or correspond with non-parametric, um, depending on the design of the study. So if you have two independent groups, um, the parametric test that you would use is an unpaired t-test. The non-parametric test that um, you use for two independent groups is the Mann-Whitney U-test. If you have two related scores, like a pretest, post-test, you use the paired t-test as the parametric um, test to use and the non-parametric test to use with two related scores would be the sign test or the Wilcoxon signed rank test. And the sign test can be used with, um, with uh, categorical data, um, but the Wilcoxon signed rank test requires um, ordinal data. The uh, Design with uh, three independent groups or more, um, you can use the one-way analysis of variance as a parametric test. For the non-parametric, you use the Kruskal-Wallis analysis of variance by ranks. And if you have three or more groups um, that have related scores, you use a one-way repeated measures analysis of variance as the parametric approach and the Friedman two-way analysis of variance by rank for the non-parametric approach. So the criteria for choosing non-parametric, there's two major criteria. And one is um, the assumptions of the population normality and homogeneity of variance cannot be satisfied, so you can't use parametric. And number two, the data are measured on nominal or ordinal scales. So for non-parametric requirements, um, we still want randomization. We want at least ordinal level data, and we want homogeneity of variance. So here's a, a quiz question for you. What is the appropriate statistical analytic approach for this study given the distribution and the variance? So you have unequal means, but you have equal variance. Select your answer and we'll move on. So because you have a normal distribution and equal variance, you can use parametric. Um, another quiz for you, match the corresponding parametric and non-parametric tests listed below. So what corresponds to unpaired t-test? What corresponds to one-way repeated measures ANOVA? What corresponds to a paired t-test? And what corresponds with a one-way analysis of variance?
And your answers are listed for you there. So now when we talk about ANOVA, which is a parametric test, the population distributions are normal with normal uh, distribution and equal variance, then um, we know that normality and homogeneity of distribution assumptions are met. They have similar shape but different locations when the null hypothesis is false. So um, we can use ANOVA and a parametric test because those ANOVA assumptions are met. The Kruskal-Wallace, on the other hand, the pop population distributions are not normal, so we can't use parametrics, so we use the Kruskal-Wallace. And the homogeneity of variance is assumed. The shapes are the same, but not normal. Therefore, continuous distribution, distribution um, is assumed, but they're not normal distributions, so then you can use the Kruskal-Wallace. So the other thing we want to mention about the non-parametric tests is the effect on the power. And um, it's usually less sensitive than a parametric test. You're using ranking scores rather than comparing precise metric changes. So the power efficiency is the test's ability to identify significant differences for a given sample size. So generally, we increase the sample size um, to make up for the difference in power when we're using a non-parametric test, because non-parametric is usually less powerful than a parametric, and you adjust for that by increasing your sample size. So except for very small sample sizes, like about six subjects or less, non-parametric tests can be as powerful as parametric. With a large sample size, non-parametric may be more powerful than parametric. So how do we choose between the two? Um, when normal distribution occurs in the sample, parametric is better. When you have long-tailed distribution with extreme scores, um, that, that skew the distribution, non-parametric is better. When distributions have different shapes, the parametric and non-parametric approaches are testing different hypotheses. So if you have these um, distributions with different shapes, parametric is, is answering the question, do the population means differ between the groups? When you have non-parametric, the question you're answering is, do population medians differ between the groups? And the focus then is on how individual scores differ between the two groups. So you can choose between the parametric and non-parametric um, approaches depending on what your, your question of interest is. Your decision regarding the best test should be based on whether the research question is formulated in terms of the population means or on the individual scores. So many scientists are interested in comparing individual scores, what method would help the greatest number of individuals. Those could be studies like comparing two methods of reducing depression or comparing clients' daily use of alcohol. So just some myths to keep in mind. Myth number one is non-parametric tests are always less powerful, and we know the power of the approach depends upon the sample size and the means. Um, so that's not necessarily always true. Myth number two, non-parametric approaches require less stringent measure, measurement properties of the data, and that's totally false. Um, the rigor in measurement needs to be the same. So what's our procedure? The non-parametric tests based, um, are based upon rank ordering of the scores. So you rank order all observations from high to low across all groups. And when scores are tied, the mean is used. So here's an example of how we've done the ranking for two groups, group A scores 
and group B scores and we rank ordered them. So you can see here that for um, the score two was the lowest score, so that's ranked as one. The score three is ranked as two. And then the rank 3.3 .3 is ranked as three. And then you get to the score 3.5 and it's a 4.5 um, because we have two scores that rank at the same place. And then, um, and then the ranking goes accordingly. Now the other thing to notice here is we have unequal, unequal ends. Group A has 10 and group B has 11 observations. So the Mann-Whitney U test is the test for two independent samples. It's one of the most powerful non-parametric tests. It's similar to the unpaired T test. It does not require samples be the same size. And the procedure is to rank order the scores, sum the ranks, calculate the U statistic, And, um, and you can see here that we've done that. Um, they've been ranked, they've been summed. And so then your sum for the two groups is 94.5 and 156.5. Then you calculate the U statistic for those. And again, SPSS does all this for you. Don't do it by hand. The, um, the formulas are here just uh, for your interest. Um, but the U is the smaller of the values of U1 and U2, and you compare it to the critical value in the table in the appendix of your um, Portney and Watkins textbook. And the critical value from the table um, in the appendix is 31. Therefore, we accept the null that, that there is not significant difference uh, between these two groups. So the next example is the Kruskal Wallace, and again, it's for two independent groups. Um, it's for greater than two independent groups, sorry. Um, and the H statistic is the alternative comparing three or more groups when the assumptions for normality and homogeneity of variance can't be met. So it's similar to the U Whitney but it's for um, three groups. And the H statistic is testing uh, using the chi-square distribution with a K minus one degrees of freedom, which you will use when you look it up in the uh, comparison chart in the textbook. And when H is significant, man whitney U test is done to determine which groups differ from one another. However, the Bonferroni Correction needs to be applied to control for the increased risk of type one error. So the sign and the Wilcoxon sign rank tests um, are also used for testing differences between correlated samples. And we have two levels, uh, repeated measure design. The sign test is one of the simplest non-parametric tests it's useful when quantification is impossible or unfeasible. And the Wilcoxon sign rank is used when data provide information on the relative magnitude of the differences. So the sign rank evaluates differences with impaired scores based upon whether one score is larger or smaller than the other. And it's good for subjective clinical variables when there's no data to provide us with information on the relative magnitude of that difference. Um, satisfaction with online training with and without case coaching. Um, the Wilcoxon rank, uh, sign rank test is much more powerful. It examines the direction and the relative amount of difference. So the procedure here is to rank the difference, um, the different scores assign positive and negative uh, signs to each, calculate the T-statistic, 
compare it to the critical values in the appendix tables, and the larger samples convert the T-score to a Z. The Friedman two-way analysis of variance by ranks is um, for your repeated measures with three or more conditions. It's useful with ordinal data. It's useful when parametric assumptions are not met. The test statistic is called the chi-square R. And when the chi-square R is significant, you test all pairwise comparisons using multi-comparison um, procedure. And again, SPSS does this all for you. Um, just so you know, when you pick on the Friedman two-way analysis, what's happening. So the sign test is useful for analyzing data when quantifications of the variables is not feasible. Is that true or false? And that is true. Um, the sign test is useful when you can't really quantify the variable um, and it allows us to still make a comparison. So that's a summary of the non-parametric tests and the procedure and um, your textbook goes through in much greater detail the formulas for each of those tests. I don't think it's worth your time memorizing those um, because as I've said repeatedly, SPSS does the calculations for you, um, but you should just understand the principles behind what's happening in SPSS when you conduct these analyses. So this concludes our discussion of non-parametric.